This is Professor Michael Chapman. I'm one of the most experienced IVF doctors in Australia. I believe that an important part that I can contribute is to educate patients in relation to fertility, infertility and all that that involves. These series of podcasts help to educate you. I hope they are helpful to you. If you wish to know more, however, I'm more than happy to have you contact me via email which is profmchapman at gmail.com or make an appointment to see me on 9138422. So there we are. We've triggered your final maturation of the eggs. We now have to harvest them. So what does harvesting involve? Well, um, the general way we do it, in fact, we've been doing it now for 35 years when i started we used to do it using minute keyhole surgery to actually go through the tummy wall to collect the eggs but with ultrasound now transvaginal ultrasound with a needle guide we can go through the vaginal wall and the ovaries are millimeters away from the vaginal wall up near the cervix so so we guide we can see on the ultrasound screen those follicles that are full of fluid and then we push the needle through the vaginal wall into each of the follicles, suck all the fluid out, hand it off to the embryologist who, in the operating theatre, tries to find the eggs. In about 80% of follicles, we'll find an egg, not 100%. And you know, so if you've got 10 follicles, I would expect to find eight eggs. That would be average, but it varies. So we've collected the eggs using a transvaginal ultrasound guiding a needle through the vagina. The anaesthetic for that varies from clinic to clinic. The most, the least invasive is to have a local anaesthetic put into the vaginal wall and then using the using nitrous oxide, laughing gas, you breathe away on that while we're collecting the eggs. And for 98% of women, that's satisfactory. It has the advantage that immediately after the gas wears off, which is seconds, you can be sitting up and then heading off home within the hour. The other way, and it's probably in Australia the majority is still done this way, is under a, a light general anaesthetic, which requires an anaesthetist to be present. That adds to the cost. It means admission to a hospital, and so it's more expensive. And the advantage is you won't feel any pain whatsoever but you will be in hospital for another two or three hours after the procedure before you're able to go home. Once the eggs have been collected, the scientists will take them to the laboratory. In the meantime, your partner, or if it's donor sperm, the donor sperm, will be prepared for insemination of the eggs. Insemination usually occurs three or four hours after the egg collection around about that 40 to 44 hour time frame where in nature the ovulated egg, the single egg, would be most fertile to meet the sperm coming the other way. So in the lab, we make the sperm come the other way by just pipetting, dropping the sperm into a dish. After it's been prepared to pick the most the best swimmers, we take them through a process of separation to give you the best swimmers, and 50,000 of them are put with every egg, and uh, then we come back 24 hours later, and hopefully by then we can see signs that the sperm has entered the egg and that the embryo is starting to develop. With low sperm counts, where we can't get that 50,000 motile sperm for every egg, we then resort to what's called ICSI, intracytoplasmic sperm injection. That's again done at around 39 to 40 hours after the original trigger injection and three or four hours after the eggs were collected. And in that, the scientist looks at whatever sperm we've got and chooses the tall, dark, handsome one that's swimming the fastest because they're likely to be the most normal ones. And we actually, they actually hit them over the head, <laughs> or actually it's the neck, to immobilise them and then pick it up with a pipette, tiny, tiny little pipette, and penetrate the eggshell to push that sperm inside the egg. So it's assisted on its way to get into the egg. The next day, almost certainly in most clinics and in my clinic at Life Fertility Sydney, the scientist will be ringing you and saying something along the lines of, yesterday we collected 10 eggs, 
they this morning we've looked and seven of the ten have fertilized that would be average 70 percent of eggs that we collect end up fertilizing then in the following days the scientists may ring you on day usually day four after the egg collection to say everything's going smoothly there are now of those seven fertilized we've got four that are looking really good and the following day on the fifth day one of those will be presuming that they've moved through to the final stage before implantation which is called the blastocyst stage once they reach the blastocyst stage we will transfer one of those into the uterus that's a very simple procedure not much more than a pap smear then which takes five or ten minutes you then have a wait of about 10 days to know whether the cycle has been successful during that time you'll also be taking extra hormones not by injection but by transvaginal tablets or pessaries to make sure that the hormone levels in the lining of the womb uh, are good <laughs> and so that the embryo has the greatest chance of attaching and going through the day 10 comes along and you haven't had a period and the pregnancy test comes back as positive it's the most wonderful news that you'll hear i love telling patients <laughs> that, that they've been successful and listening to the tears and the laughter at the other end of the phone unfortunately even with our best technologies and the average positive test is 35 to 40 percent if you're under 38 years of age and less if you're older turning that around is breaking the news that it hasn't worked and that unfortunately will occur in 60 odd percent of cycles so although we tell you all that the sad news is that most couples having had all of that treatment ending up with a blastocyst putting it back believe it will be successful sadly the majority won't be we then have to pick ourselves up from the devastation that produces emotionally and go forward and going forward may mean hopefully you've got frozen embryos because if you produce two or three and we've put one back and it hasn't worked there'll be a couple in the freezer and we can move on to another cycle those cycles are much less invasive you don't need injections and we basically just watch for your own ovulation and put an embryo back in there'll also obviously be those where there are only the one embryo it was only one embryo and we have to start from scratch again so um that's basically a run through of the cycle of ivf and don't forget that you can access all the previous episodes by going to our website www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu. <laughs>